well what if i say that you can find all the prime numbers up till n very very efficiently an algorithm that would work for n as large as 10 million in under one second and you can check if a number is prime or not in o of one in constant time mind blowing isn't it but trust me there isn't anything fishy here we can do it and how well, that is exactly what we'll discuss now so having set our expectations from the video let's jump straight in. so let's take up this simple problem to find the prime numbers till let's say 50 so here's the naive way the way any layman would uh, solve this problem so what he'll do he, he'll run a loop for i that goes from 2 to n right so basically considering all the numbers between 2 and n or even 1 and n also or like we are taking 50 here so we can take 50 we can also change this to 1 but basically taking all the possibilities and then checking if i is prime if i is prime then you can either add it to some kind of a list or you can directly print i right so that is the basic idea you go on every possible number you check if it is prime or not and you print it if it is so what is the time complexity so this part is o of n right where n in this case we are taking to be 50 and this part as we discussed in the first video the one of the most efficient ways the one we discussed will check if a number is prime or not in o of square root of n right so since this is nested inside the outer one so we can say that the time complexity comes out to be n multiplied by square root of n or n root n right and what values for n would it run for well the maximum it could go for is around 10 to power 5 if the time limits are generous enough or you can say that for a problem for the algorithm to work in every possible case we can safely say that it would work for n as big as 10 to power 4 but here's the here's the kind of the downside the shortcoming of this that you can be given n as large as 10 to power 7 so no matter how much you optimize this this is not going to work so here comes the efficient algorithm the sieve of eratosthenes as you would have guessed from the title so let's have a look at how it works so what we do is instead of finding the prime numbers we find all the numbers that are composite and in the end if a number is not composite then it is a prime like like a very basic idea right but what this helps us is we can check if a number is composite or not very efficiently so what we'll do is we'll simply go on every prime number like 2 3 5 and then we'll simply cut out all its multiples so getting the feeling of why it's called the sieve of eratosthenes like we are filtering out the prime numbers from all possible numbers if we take the analogy of saving flour then the flour that gets filtered through the desired substance are prime numbers and the impurities that remain on the top are analogous to composite numbers and it was devised by the greek mathematician eratosthenes hence the name sieve of eratosthenes and this is an ancient algorithm which dates as back as 250 BC. The verbose name of this algorithm gives it the illusion that it's quite hard but the idea is really basic and the code is merely four lines long as well. So let's say we go on 2 first so i is 2 and then what we do is we cut off all the multiples of 2. When I say strike off I mean that they can definitely not be a prime number because they are a multiple of 2 right. Then what we do is we go on every multiple of 3. So i is now 3. So we go on every multiple of 3 and strike it down as well. So 9, 12, 15, all of them get striked down. I'm just using different colors for multiples of different numbers. But our algorithm is basically going to strike them off. So 12 will get striked off twice by 2 also and 3 also. Right, so 9 can not be a prime number, 15 cannot be a prime number and so on then we go to 5 so we come to 5 
to strike off all its multiples. The first one that is not being striked off is 25. Then 30 is already striked off. Then we have 35 which is strike off. 40 is already striked off. 45 and 50 all of them are already striked off. And we do the same for 7 as well. So we cut off 49. But there is one very clear observation that some of you might have noticed as well. Is effectively as you can notice 7 is cutting off 49 as its first multiple. Like although it can cut off 14 and 21 and all as well. But effectively 7's first multiple that it's striking off which has not been striked off yet is 49. Same goes for 5. For 5 the first multiple it cut off was 25. Right, and for 3, the first multiple it cut off was 9. So, can you notice a pattern here that for any number i, the first multiple j it cuts off is i square? Well, why there's a very clever kind of a logic to this is let's say 7 cuts off 35. So, by contradiction, we can say that since 35 is 7 into 5, it can be written as 5 into 7 as well, and since 5 is smaller than 7. 35 has definitely been cut off by 5 before we came to 7, right? So 7 into 2 that is 14 here is being cut off by 2 before 7, right? All the multiples of 7 that are less than 7 square, 7 into 7, like here let's say 14 which is 7 into 2 is also a multiple of 2, right? So it has already been previously cut off when we were considering the multiples of 2. 21 has already been cut off when we were considering the multiples of 3. The first multiple of 7 that has not been considered yet is its square. Right, 7 into 7 that is 49 and after that all of 7's multiples. The idea behind the algorithms that we have discussed in this playlist, all the 3 algorithms is optimization through pruning. We do not need to consider those possibilities that have already been handled automatically. So after 7 the next number is 8 and we can say that 8 square 64 is greater than 50. So we kind of break out here because anyways the first multiple that 8 was going to cut was 64 which is greater than 50. And again like 8 was a composite number here it has already been striked off. So we were going to ignore it right. But like the main idea is we can stop whenever i square exceeds n. So we went on 2, we went on 3, we went on 4 which has already been striked off, then we went on 5, then 6 has been striked off, basically it's a composite number so we can leave that, then we go to 7, right, and then we go to 8 but at here we stop. And for each of the numbers i, we start considering all its multiples from i square, right. And now as you can see that all the numbers that have not been crossed out are simply prime numbers. So 2 is a prime, 3 is a prime, 5 is a prime, 7 is a prime, 11 is a prime, so on till 47 is a prime and this is all those numbers that have not been striked off basically are not composite are prime. So that's how the save algorithm is working and now let's write some code for it as well. So let's come on to the code. So let's first take the input for n right, which we will pass in as 50 because we have discussed that throughout the video. And then let's create a vector right of boolean so that cutting off and all can be represented as true and false if a number if if let's say c of i or let's name it prime of i these are the two most used variable names for this algorithm and if let's say prime of i is true this means i is prime right so let's create it of size n plus 5 to be on safer side and let's fill it with trues so this means that initially we are considering every number to be prime right but then we we'll set some of them to false and why not a simple array well that is because it is not possible to initialize in a single line all the values with true you can initialize them with false or like 0 or minus 1 using memset but it's always better to work with vectors so here I have used the vector of booleans and uh, filled it with trues so now we are going to simply run the loop for int i equal to 2 right we can run from 2 then i goes up till n and i plus plus right but remember i does not go up till n it goes up till i a square root of n or uh, 
like in languages like python you can use square root of n but in c++ since the loop is quite explicit you can write i into n i is less than equal to n so then we can simply check if i is a prime right if it is then we have to go on all its multiples from its square so let the multiple be denoted by j which is i square j is less than equal to n and j plus equals i right so this is all the multiples of i and what we do is we simply set prime of j equal to false so after this we have an array of trues and false and let's say to print all the true values we go on right then we check if i is a prime if it is then we right right so now let's run it on the sample input of 50 and here i am using the code chef ide an online ide that saves you the effort of setting up a local environment and is like very useful as well so yes we get all the prime numbers till 50 and the added advantage here is as you might have guessed to simply check if a number is prime or not we simply check prime of i if that's true i is a prime otherwise it's not and this means that checking if a number is prime or not can be converted from square root of n in the previous video to o of 1 now but but notice that this sieve algorithm itself is taking n log of log of n that is the time complexity for this algorithm and like as you can see that the higher the value of i the less times this loop for j runs and the smaller the value of i the more times this loop for j runs right so that's why you cannot accurately tell the number of operations this is taking but using some uh, like using some kind of identities popular identities and then approximating it and using progressions and then integrating the result we get the complexity to be approximately n into log of log of n where the base is 2 right so you can take it to be approximately o of n a little more than o of n so that's why it runs for Trying to parse seven perfectly. So yeah, that is the sieve algorithm. And now I feel that you are quite well equipped with one of the major, one of the integral parts of number theory. That is the theory of prime numbers. And now, since you have all these algorithms in your armory, and if you haven't been participating on Code Chef yet, then you should start to participate. There are contests that are held in which you can test your skills. where you could apply these concepts and there are mainly four types of contests currently taken on code chef out of which the code chef starters is exclusively for beginners as well as the code chef long challenge is again you can say kind of to be for beginners because it's a long challenge it spans for over 10 days so you have enough time to think of the problem and if you are not a speed coder then it's perfect for you so i definitely recommend that you start participating them from now on and you can definitely participate in the other two contests the cook off and the lunch time as well so this is the c algorithm this wraps up the video if you like the concept and you understood something new then make sure to like the video and if you have any queries then you can always leave down a comment i'll see you next time